you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Exodus 6, 6. Today's Bible verse is Exodus 6, 6. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. When God gave those words to Moses, the man he'd chosen to liberate his children from intense oppression, circumstances felt dark and hopeless. Worse, in fact, than before Moses began his liberation mission. He'd done as God had asked, had spoken with the Pharaoh, only to see the ruler retaliate by making the people's lives exponentially worse. The Israelites were not pleased. In fact, they were downright distraught, and understandably so. Scripture tells us that same day, Pharaoh ordered the slave drivers and foremen to stop supplying the straw the people used to make their bricks, forcing them to get it themselves without decreasing how many bricks they were required to make each day. Load them down with more work, he said. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. According to Exodus 5, verse 12, the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use as straw. In other words, they couldn't even find straw. I envision them scraping up bits and pieces, maybe that had been dropped and left behind from their supplies from the day before, doing all they could to quickly gather what they needed. And they indeed had to move quickly. If it had been challenging to meet the Pharaoh's demands prior, it was doubly, maybe triply, so now. They were probably hot, exhausted, their muscles and their backs and their joints probably hurt, and I imagine their hearts hurt as well for themselves and for their family members, maybe even their elderly parents and their children. And isn't that the hardest when our faith tends to be challenged most? When we see those, we love suffering, and it seems as if God is not only not helping, but things appear to be getting worse. And then what if we feel like we've played a part in that? When, like Moses, we're certain God wanted us to do or say something, we do it, and then everything appears to fall apart. When that happens, we might be tempted to doubt God or our ability to hear Him. Or, focused on the moment, on the here and now, we might doubt his goodness. Can you imagine how Moses must have felt watching his people, maybe even his mom and his sister, suffer to the extent that they were? There was no way the Israelites could gather their supplies and make the bricks they needed to. And when everyone came up short, the slave drivers whipped the Israelite foreman. So they pleaded with the Pharaoh, please don't treat your servants like this. They were desperate for the beatings to stop. But Pharaoh only shouted at them, accused them of being lazy, and told them to return to work. Terrified and distraught, they found Moses and Aaron who were waiting outside and they basically cursed them. May the Lord judge you and punish you for making a stink before Pharaoh and his officials, they said. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. You can probably imagine how Moses must have felt hearing this. Now, granted, God had told him previously that Pharaoh wasn't going to give the people up quickly or easily. It would take numerous displays of his power. But Moses obviously didn't expect Pharaoh to retaliate, or at least not so harshly against the people. Or maybe he didn't realize how much it would hurt to see them suffer like this, and to know that they blamed him. And so, also distraught, he protested to God, saying, Why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why did you send me? We've probably all been there. When life squeezes us or those we love, we might be tempted to lash out at God, to accuse him of not only ignoring us, but actually bringing us harm. 
when he may in fact be setting us and our loved ones up for a life-changing, faith-building, jaw-dropping miracle. That was precisely what God was doing here. Now you will see what I will do, God said in Exodus 6, verse 1. Pharaoh was about to feel the force of God's strong hand, and everyone would see God's love for his people. God did indeed free his people from their oppressors in a powerful way that the nation would reflect on and gain strength from and and increased faith from again and again for generations. And we belong to that same strategic, powerful, loving, and faithful God. He is still leading us, his people, to freedom. Sometimes things do become harder before they get better. But that doesn't mean that God's abandoned us. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. Many times it's because he's setting us up for a miracle, for that moment when we've crossed our own Red Seas, whatever barriers once stood between us and safety, and we're watching the waves crash over our enemies, knowing victory could only come from God, and knowing that many more miraculous victories are still to come. Let's pray. Father, during our difficult, frightening, and painful moments, remind us of who you are. Remind us of your love and your power and your promise to care for us. We know your arm is never too short to save. Your ear is never too dull to hear. We know the God who heard the cries of his people back when they lived as slaves in Egypt, who heard their cries when their burdens temporarily increased, the God who moved with power and might on their behalf and brought them to a place of provision and safety. We know that God, you God, will fight for us, your beloved. And so we wait on you. Help us to wait in faith, and in courage, not in fear or despair, and to remain focused on your promises. In the name of your victorious and loving Son, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed this episode, would you leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast app? It helps us connect to more listeners like you. This episode was produced by Kelly Gibbons and Stephen Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. We want to thank our wonderful hosts, Jennifer Slattery and Grace Fox. You can hear more from Jennifer by visiting jenniferslatterylivesoutloud.com. And you can find out more from Grace by visiting gracefox.com. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com.